Hello and welcome to the last Fusion 360 What's New of 2020. As always, be sure to check out the What's New blog linked in the description for more details like bug fixes and preview features. Let's jump in. Up first, continuing the theme of turning tool freedom that we started last release, you can now use grooving tools in profile roughing operations. Generally, roughing with a grooving tool uses an axial pecking motion to remove material, as these tools don't typically handle side forces very well. However, in the spirit of creative problem solving, we think you should be able to make that call, so you can use the most appropriate combination of tool and strategy for the job. In that same vein, groove tools can now be used in threading operations. One major use case is custom threads that use the grooving tool profile, like these square threads. Another is deburring more traditional threads to have a blunt start, removing the thin piece that can lead to cross-threading, cut hands, and other downstream complications. John Saunders does an excellent job of explaining the benefits and workflow, linked in the upper right-hand corner. But the short version is that you'll create a copy of your threading operation and select the grooving tool you'd like to use. In the Geometry tab, set the confinement back from front and set the back offset to the thread pitch. In the Passes tab, make sure that the thread pitch is correct. For example, on this part, I have eight threads per inch, so I'll enter one over eight. This should update the containment to just be the very first thread. And in the stock simulation, I can see that the thin partial thread gets removed, so I'm left with a blunt start. In FFF Additive, we added support for GTEC and XYZ printing 3D printers. We also added new print statistics. After generating the toolpath for an FFF printer, the print time appears at the bottom of the browser. Double click on the print time browser node to access even more information, like the breakdown of printing time and how much filament will be used. You can also access this from the actions panel of the toolbar. Up next, a range is coming out of preview. A range allows you to arrange any object on a sketch, plane, or planar face. Spencer made a more in-depth video on a range linked in the upper right-hand corner now, but I want to quickly cover one of my favorite arrange capabilities. When you arrange within a sketch, you can accurately model stock by including any existing holes in the stock, and a range will keep your parts away from them by the specified distance. This is great for using up scraps and getting the most out of your stock material. A range is also associative. So if you go back in time and change the parts or the shape of the stock sketch, the arrangement is automatically updated. Also remember that to access a range in the design workspace, you need to set that in preferences under general design. Coming new to preview are updated tolerance colors for inspection results. We're looking for feedback on this preview feature, so be sure to let us know what you think at the link in the description. In the past, Fusion 360 used the same colors but two different conventions when it came to stock simulation and inspection results. The new tolerance colors aim to reduce confusion by using the same colors to mean the same things in both stock simulation and inspection. For both stock simulation and inspection results, green continues to mean that the part is intolerance. Blue means there's excess material, and red means that there is a gouge. To further reduce confusion, we also added a legend to the bottom of the inspection results window. As a part of this effort, out-of-tolerance results from probe geometry, probe WCS, and manual inspection are now shown in orange, while intolerance results are shown in green. If you try this out, let us know what you think at the feedback link in the description. Last but not least, we are very excited to launch a preview of nesting in manufacture. Please note that this functionality will eventually be part of an extension. Nesting in Fusion 360 offers an integrated, automated, and associative way to nest many parts out of flat sheet stock. The first thing I'll point out is actually in the design workspace. In the tool section of the toolbar, setup will allow you to preemptively filter parts, so you can ignore sheet metal, sketches, or other kinds of parts. In this case, I only want to nest sheet metal, so I'll ignore sketches and selected entities. To start nesting your parts in the manufacturer workspace under the fabrication section of the toolbar, create a new nesting study. Here you can specify how many instances of the entire assembly you'd like to nest and change some of the nesting parameters. 
Click OK, and Fusion will generate the nest with each sheet appearing in the browser, where you can activate to look at the nest. Parts are automatically grouped and nested by material and thickness. You can also view a report of the nesting study, which includes a visual representation and information like the nesting efficiency for each sheet. To set up and manage your available stock materials, choose the Process Material Library from the Manage section of the toolbar. And of course, you can use the generated nests to create toolpaths to drive your water jet, laser, plasma, or other machine. For more detailed information on how to use nesting, please check the help link in the description. And as I said earlier, this is a preview of nesting functionality, so please let us know what you think at the feedback link in the description. That's all for this manufacturing update. Be sure to check out what's new in design, engineering, and electronics, and have a safe and happy holiday season.